caption the caption the caption yes <laughs> i know i know you guys are expecting me to announce my wedding right my wedding date yes i would announce that soon but not on today's video and certainly not today okay it's just an important aspect okay before and then after getting married one thing i think people it's either they don't really know about it or they are neglecting to look at it right the life life has a lot of aspects and facets and sometimes it gets so busy and daunting that yes if your, your attention is not drawn to some of these things you might not get it so hi guys you're yeah, welcome to another episode of the doctor's quarters thank you to those that are joining me for the first time and to my returning subscribers thank you welcome back sorry <laughs> okay welcome back to my returning subscribers all right today we're going to be talking about something that i went through okay yes i always tell you guys that i see cases and then most of them that i believe people ought to learn from there are lessons in there there's information to be passed on and then i bring it here and then we discuss it i let you know what it is that you have to do so that you don't end up like some of the people that we see in the hospital yes there's a popular saying that to be forewarned is to be forearmed and of course prevention is always better than cure so today we're talking about sti sexually transmitted infections aka std it used to be called sexually transmitted diseases but now we call it sexually transmitted infection one of them actually just one i want to touch on one i just want us to be aware that these things are still around okay growing up it was very loud promotion on it it was on tv people had programs talking to the youth about them and all that that we abstain and be careful but well now i don't really really get it out there like that it's like <clears throat> sorry guys <laughs> i don't really like it's not really being spoken about so much not anymore i want i just want us to know that it is still very much around and it is causing a lot of havoc a lot a lot and let me just list a few okay infect most infertility issues come from some of these stis if not treated properly sometimes we we contact some of these things and we stay at home get to a pharmacy take some medication and we are fine or go to one of these herbal shops they get us some concoction and we're okay <clears throat> i'm sorry guys please i'm not so well okay so pardon my coughing and all that and then we stay at home and we think it's gone so that is it no they catch up with us later later you're married you want to have kids and you have so many issues only for you to come to or get to a fertility clinic and then they trace it all the way back to some of these stis they can also cause urethral strictures that very narrow tube in your penis that carries the urine out that tube yes when we say there's a stricture it means it is narrow like this but a part of it may be kinked so when the urine is flowing and it gets to that part it's not able to because it's closed it's not able to flow then you know you, you can't urinate and know when you come to the hospital they have to pass a catheter and run several tests financially and all that and also it can cause hospitalization you mean you spend a lot of money in the hospital coming in going out some of these things are actually in fact most of them are very very preventable they are preventable right yes and so and finally finally people die from these things right so today we want to talk about the sti hiv growing up again it was a big deal the, it was just awareness campaign all over the tv 
they came to our school spoke to us and back then it used to be like okay it was a disease of promiscuity especially for the youth coming up they made it seem like uh, married people were kind of exempted in a way growing up was like okay you, you abstain either you abstain or you stick with one sexual partner and it was it was a big deal then but now we don't really hear about it the reason why i'm bringing it up like i said is because i had an encounter at work not with one not with two three people and it stood out to me and so i just want us to take note of one or two things right so um it as we know it is sexually transmitted that is one of the ways that it is contacted also there's a vertical transmission where a mother through childbirth gives it to her child also when you have any bruise abrasion on your skin and fluid from an affected person gets into contact with yours you can contact it so that's why we're told that when you go to the barbering salon you make sure that whatever clipper is used on the person before you is sterilized before it is used on you because you can get it through such means health workers especially because we deal with blood from patients the cannulation and syringes and all that we can also contact it through such means and then people who use needles for illicit drug administration those who do this heroin cocaine and stuff they so like in a group you have one syringe and then this person insects it and finish and gives to this person you can get it through that but today we're focusing on the sexual aspect of it sexual way of getting it because should be told about 99 percent of all the cases are actually sexually uh, transmitted they get it through sex that is why i chose the caption that i chose i said before and after the ring right yes we're, we're in a hurry it's fancy i'm in a relationship and we're having sex we're enjoying ourselves and it's so cool and all that i'm married i mean the wedding was flashy it was nice i have a beautiful child a beautiful home let's maintain it at that let your home keep being beautiful and let that relationship keep blossoming but you have to worry about this one thing let me just take it up from where i i got it from the hospital so we had a patient who came in with an extensive rash on his right arm very extensive just thinking about it makes my teeth cringe okay it was extensive very bad right from this side all the way to um the shoulder and usually it was happy zoster like the elder brother of chicken pox it happens to everyone but not that extensive in immunocompetent people if your immune system is okay it doesn't really get much or get to affect you that much so quickly we spoke to the patient and made him aware that we think there's more going on so we'd like to run some more tests including the hiv test he agreed and then we ran the test it came out positive we had to go and break the news to our patient and yes usually i mean imagine you watching me right now imagine you walking around finding everything and then you go to the hospital and some tests is run and you are told you have hiv what is the reaction right you can let me know in the comment section what is he, what what is your reaction going to be like i think usually it is a reaction of i'm dead of pain of disappointment of like my world has come to an end that is where usually we health workers get to know that this person didn't know because people actually know they have it and they come and they tell you they you ask them if they they have any condition you have to know about and they say no only for you to run the tests and then it comes out positive so we approach our patients and people who already know would give you a surprise look when i tell you or when i'm told i have hiv it is not a surprise um, you're expected to show I expected to show devastation so they force a surprise look and he gave us that we were like okay fine told him what we had to do that we had to run some tests be sure he was okay to start taking the antiretrovirals that's the medications against the virus 
and he was like okay so we did everything and then we had to let him know that yes because he came with his wife his wife actually accompanied him to the hospital goes home to cook brings it they have kids at home so she'll see to the kids finish and come come and see to him they would talk a while and then she'll go back so we knew he wasn't married so we told him that oh now that you have i mean we've seen them diagnosed you're about to put you on treatment let your wife also know you because let's get it clear out there that in no doctor has the right to disclose no health worker doctor nurse whoever has a right to disclose your medical condition even to your mother your child your spouse no it is your right and your right alone so we went to our patient told him that it is in the best interest of your wife and your family that you let her know that oh this is it then she comes in herself to them we also check her out if it's positive then she starts receiving treatment as well right so we told this man that and guess what he said no he doesn't want his wife knowing his condition so we have to even ask him i mean when was the last time they had sex and all i said so they are they actively have sex almost all the time do you get it so we 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 did that so the man said he was not going to let his wife know and that we should also not let his wife know about it yes can you imagine you know carrying the virus is one thing but knowing and coming in earlier and starting treatment that is that is where the trick is when you start treatment on time you are like any normal person walking around you weaken the virus in your system so it's just what they call the viral load so your viral load is so low it's not able to cause any condition any problem in you and you are fine and you're walking around that is why we were speaking to him that he lets his wife know but then he said no that's not where the whole thing is you know we we gave him his medications we had we had some in the pharmacy in the hospital so we prescribed it he got it it comes in this container a container like this and usually when you're in the hospital your medications are kept by your bedside but the nurses are the ones who administer them because they are time bound so when it's time they come and then administer so the next day we came to review and the nurses were like can you imagine we're like oh what was it he said a man had transferred the medication from the bottle into this little ziplocs when you buy folic acid and B complex those things they put it in small ziploc he had transferred the medication from its original container into that meaning that the wife would not find no one would ever get to know about it and he would get treatment and then what's what happens to the wife well that's one there was a second man same thing he i think genuinely didn't know he had the virus but after we told him about it and also told him that it was in the best interest of his wife to also i mean come in and get tested the man actually even threatened us that should the wife find out during their stay in the hospital or should she find out at all he would sue the hospital or sue us and that there was no way the wife was going to find this out that was what the man told us right so there's one lady as well whom i saw in my consulting room would actually be talking to her i would interview her virtually you guys know how sensitive this whole hiv thing is and then the stigmatization as attached to it too she, i wouldn't show her face we just call her and speak to her i saw her young girl she'll tell her at her age she's less than 40 years old for sure but i don't know 30 what yes so she came into my consulting room and i asked her what was it? she said she was coming for medications usually when people come in that they're coming for their medications it's either you're thinking hypertension diabetes or of course hiv but that's sometimes you you put it at the back of your head usually it's diabetes and then hypertension that they come in for so immediately i went onto the computer searching and searching and searching and i couldn't find her name so i was like oh is it hypertension or diabetes and hesitantly she told me it was um 
HIV. I tried very hard to hide my surprise, but if you know me very well, you know I'm inquisitive. So I, I, I was writing my stuff, and when I went back and I looked at her, I said, I mean, I'm sorry for asking, but if she doesn't mind, how old is she? She told me her age, what work does she do? I asked her all of those things. How did she contact it? That's what we'll be finding out today. She told me all that, and I was surprised. I said, no, I really had to come out here and then let us know what is going on. Hello. So, Hello. Thank you. Yeah. W would you please speak up a little bit so that my audience can really hear you? Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. So, like we spoke about this, I just want to interview you, hear your own side of whatever it is that happened. Okay. Right. So please watch her. Like, how old are you? 37 years. Yeah, 37. Fine. And what's your occupation? Librarian. Right. Librarian. And then your marital status? Married. You're married. And children? Do you have any children? Yes, I have a child. Is it a boy or a girl? A daughter. A girl. You have a daughter. Sure. Yes. So for the, the for my audience to really get it, are you HIV positive? Yes, please. For how long now? How long have you had the infection? She says seven years. You've had it for seven years. Yes. And you are 37. So that means you had it, or you got to know that you had it around yes, 30, 30 years. So how did you find out? How, how, how did it come about? How did you find out that you were positive? All right. So it's like I've been seeing her often. Anytime I go to the hospital. Yes. So the last time I went there, she told me that I told her mom this time she's bad. So she only asked me a few questions and then she wrote some last for me. So okay. after that lab, I came to her and then she just told me this is what. So it was like it was not. <laughs> yeah. It was not easy that day. I can imagine. I can so so wait. Let me ask him. Uh, when you were told, what was your reaction? Initially, I cried. Right. I cried, 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 cried. Yeah. Wow, I was there. I didn't leave. I I can't say. I can imagine. I can I can never put myself in yeah. your shoes. Right. Oh. So, do you know how you contacted it? That I can't tell. You can't tell. Yes. Okay. So up till now you don't know how you got it. So I've accepted it, but I can't be that this is it or that is it. Yes. Right. But you were single when you 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 got it, right? Or were you yes. you were you married? Yes. You were no, single. I was single. Yes. And you had a partner. Yes. Wait, did you have more than one partner or it was just one partner? Just one. Okay, so it's safe to say that it's your partner that gave you uh, okay. the infection. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, we are almost rounding this up, right? You are married no. to that same partner, right? Yes. And he is also positive or he doesn't know. Yes. He is also positive. Yes. And you have a son and your son is negative. A daughter, she's Sorry, your daughter is negative. Yes. You are you are very well, right? Yes. Like so, like how has this knowing that you have and living with it? How has it affected your life, either positively or negatively? How how has it affected you? Uh, initially, I was not okay because sometimes even if I go to bed, you see me putting my head on the table. I will not do anything the whole day. I didn't even want anybody to see me, and then I would just, after work, I would just pack my things and then leave. But later, I said, oh, at this thing, there's nothing I can do about it. All I have to do is take my medication. And, and so when I was taking it, I realized I was becoming a child, and then I said, let me accept it that way, and then life goes on. So, mm. 
right right so how is your health now mm, for now i'm better you're better yes you're you're okay right i'm okay or is it that you fall sick often or something no you're okay I'm, I'm okay since you started on your medications yes and you take them all all, all the time right Yes, yes. Sure. So you, you live like fine and normal and everything. Mm -hmm, yeah, normal life. Okay. So finally, finally, there are people I'm going to talk to about this. I, I have my own side of, you know, or my own advice I want to give to people. That's why I'm interviewing you. But oh, okay. you living with it, I can advise as much as possible. Okay. I, or as much as I can. But I, I don't have the virus. So... It will be different coming from you who live with the virus. Uh -huh. So what advice would you give to people married and married that are going to listen to this interview? If you have any advice. Okay. For those that are single of marriage, yes. they don't have it now, then just be careful. Right. Protect yourself. Make sure you don't get it. But if you already have it, too, yes. that's not the end of your life. Let's go for treatment and you'll be okay. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you very much, Lily, for coming on to my show. I okay. wish you well and I hope your health remains the same, good and everything. So I'll talk to you some other time. Thank you. Oh, okay. right. What I have to tell you, let me just add it on. After we've listened to um, her story and all that, is that, look, you... Are responsible for you whether you're single or you're married you are responsible for you and you alone and be coming from a I mean medical point of view and I'm advising us that look sex is nice it is cool when people talk about it they their face lights up when we go to work and sometimes you have some free time and we're talking about all these things hey I mean, it's not easy, but it comes with responsibilities. Mainly you to yourself and yourself alone, right? So what I want to say is that first of all, let's protect ourselves. Let's protect ourselves, right? I know abstinence is the best. It is the best, but you and I know that there are people who are not abstaining. In fact, many people are not abstaining. In fact, when you talk abstinence, people might even laugh at you and all that. So yes, abstaining is the key. It is the best. It is like, you won't get that. But to those of us who are not abstaining, number one, let's protect ourselves. This one is for the singles. As for married people, I, I don't know how it is. If your husband or your wife would agree to use a condom i really don't think it works like that and the bible says that your body is your husband's as well as yours being his so i mean in marriage i don't know if the condom thing would work but for the singles let's stop being reckless and endangering our lives get yourself a condom get yourself a condom and use it maybe the other person might not agree it goes for the, uh, the ladies and then the men if the man refuses you use it there are female condoms out there if you didn't know i'm letting you know there are female condoms if he refuses use it so you protect yourself that is one and then two occasionally go to the hospital once you're sexually active this goes for the married and the unmarried go let them run a complete sti profile on you let them run it. We can't stop the man or the woman infecting you with whatever virus, in this case, HIV virus. We can't stop it. You might use protection, right? Especially for those that are married. I mean, these things used to be for like singles who were promiscuous and going on and on and about. But today, you have a husband and your husband has three side chicks. So it's like you, you're, you're having sexual intercourse with four people. That is the norm. Your wife might be having sex with other people. So you are actually also having sex with other people. And I don't know, I mean, I know people know their spouses cheat on them and all that. And the only concern they have 
is that he doesn't respect me that's why he's cheating or it's he's breaking my heart it's, it's all about the emotional aspect but look <laughs> there are there are women that have come to the hospital that their husbands died you know when you, you speak to them their husband died some like years ago and then when you you get the history you realize that it was either hiv that killed the husband he got to know about it instead of taking his medications he did not went ahead spreading it didn't even tell the wife and then they they die of the women coming years later when the disease has progressed to advanced level their brain involved and then they come suffer 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 we try our best and then they die anyways so take it upon yourself if you're married you can invite your husband he might not agree to go with you go anyway so that if at all he has given it to you or you have been infected with the virus you can catch it early and then start treating yourself hiv infected person who is consistent and compliant on their antiretroviral medications are like every normal person walking around let's not forget that so like i said one you should know that you are responsible for yourself so you protect yourself with condoms secondly you should go for thorough thoroughly 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 be checking up yourself all the time six months time you go in and check six months time you go in and check and be careful because nowadays you just might not know and thirdly when you find out be it the lady or the man that you are positive hiv positive please let your partner know married or unmarried let your partner know because your partner might have other partners and if you don't let them know they would infect the other people also with it and trust me that's your sister that you love so much might be one of the people that your partners other partners will be sleeping with also and the cycle continues your daughter even your wife whoever aside the fact that telling them earlier no matter what what happens whether they they leave you or whether they get shattered and or you've told them they get the uh, pieces of their life together goes they are also started on their medications and everything is fine as it is supposed to be so this is what i want us to know that we should be responsible sex comes with responsibilities as much as you're enjoying yourself just let, let your mind calm down C calm down to reasoning level and think through right and do it just go to the hospital let them check you out you might pay something small it is not worth that small money it's not worth you waiting till you come to the hospital frail and weak they when they come it's so sad they cannot eat i had a patient she was 49 she looked like she was 60. 49 her hair falling off she couldn't even walk there was food she would not be able to eat she couldn't even talk sauce all over her mouth i mean these things are not to be joked with and then to those of us i when i, I started i said it there is some sort of stigmatization attached to this condition let's stop it let's stop it let's be guided let's be informed you can like i said from the beginning an hiv person with their medications is like any one of us so you can have a meal together with an hiv positive patient you can go out with them you can have fun together you can sit and you can be friends with them there's no need making them feel like they are they are they are different or no they are not different actually especially for those who are on their medications they are just like anyone they don't even need you a uh, pity you just have to they are normal people walking around let's stop i mean stigmatizing let's stop shaming them in any way and whatever it is and lastly to you watching me who has the condition it is not the end of the world not at all keep to your medications you should eat healthy a healthy lifestyle and then keep 
checking yourself up that's why your medications are not given for one year or two years they are given for three months and then you have to come back for the doctor to assess you and be sure don't get tired of taking the medications just like someone with hypertension and diabetes who would be on medications till they die so keep taking your medications do not bother at all keep taking them and then you will be very very much okay and fine right and so we have come to the end of this video i really hope you find value and take action as to what i have spoken to us about if you have any questions if you have any topic you're not clear on you want me to talk about you can drop a comment down below and i will visit it and we see how best we can deal with that you have not hit on the subscribe button please do that now and thank you for doing that and the notification as well so that you're notified anytime i put it up and share this video sharing it is important many people don't know some of these things most people actually so you share the video let as many people who need it get it i'll see you in the next one bye